let's talk about the moral and social implications of fiat and inflation and then Bitcoin. So Larry has said that fiat is a matter of life and death for our children. Uh, Greg has said fiat is slave coin. And these are big moral claims. And I'd love to hear you guys talk about your reasoning that arrived at um, at these big claims. Uh, Larry, you want to start? Yeah, I'll go first. I mean, I, people should watch my New Orleans conference show because of uh, speech, because I talk about this a lot. I mean, I don't think there's anybody listening to this call or anyone really in the, in the countries we all live in that would agree that theft is okay. You know, everyone, um, property rights are part of Western civilization. And um, what the government does to us and the way they run the monetary system is they steal from us on a regular basis. And that seems to be okay to them. And they do it by diluting the, the currency. And so they're stealing our time and our labor and our savings. And it's, it's evil. I mean, it prevents people from retiring. Uh, it, you know, they, they, the people who are able to borrow this cheap money at first become cotillionaires because they get the advantage of it. Um, you know, they, we all pay for it by inflation the inflation is completely distorted and and so forth and you know it's it's if you have corrupt money it leads to a corrupt society and you know i mean the you know the bible said this i mean honest weights and measures i mean the you know our constitution said this only gold and silver are money because they lived through the hyperinflation of of um of the continental and uh you know it, it's corrupt money leads to a corrupt society and that's you know and it, and there are a thousand you know, pieces of evidence to support that, but we don't have time to go into them all now here. I, I suggest people listen to my speech because I, I mentioned some of them there. And it was an amazing speech. I'll concur. And I, you know, Larry uh, says it eloquently. He says it from someone who sat in a risk chair for longer than I have. I mean, I only started managing money in 1988. Larry, I don't know. You were probably a couple of years yeah, earlier than yeah, that. 83. Right? 83. All right. So here's the truth. When we started managing money in 1983, you did. And I started sort of trading markets, I'll be honest, in 1983. Um, <laughs> that uh, interest rates, U.S. Treasury tenure was uh, close to uh, 16, one six percent. OK, I remember. one six. OK, that's when these brilliant pension allocators made a decision that 60 percent stock and 40 percent bonds, you could reach uh, a a. a uh, targeted return that would satisfy your, uh, your auditors, your, your, uh, pension auditors that your, that your, uh, pension liabilities were fully funded. This is a big issue, right? Fully funded pension plans. You mentioned that the fed balance sheet will be 30 trillion, Larry, you're about one seventh of the way. It'll have to be 200 trillion because all of these Medicare and Medicaid expenses, which is 160 trillion. People are yeah. counting on this stuff. Yeah. Guys, it's one, it's mathematics. There's called on balance sheet obligations and off balance sheet obligations. Okay. So you've got 160 trillion in today's dollars that aren't ever going to get paid. You better understand mathematics, but let's go back one level up. Why is Bitcoin freedom money? And why is fiat slave money? Well, very simply, when you continue to print dollars or any fiat for that matter, the people that at least have a chance of keeping up with this inflation or the debasing that happens with the fiat money is the people that own hard assets. So everyone's today like saying, oh, I'm making so much money on my house. My house is going up in dollar in, in value. And, and the answer to that is absolutely wrong. You just failed math. Okay. It's not that your house price is going up in value. It's that the unit of account called a debasing US dollar is going down and therefore it takes more uh, of this us dollar to buy the same house if you measured house prices in gold if you measured equity returns in gold over the last 20 years you would see that the returns are basically flat all right bitcoin makes all of those calculations moot but again bitcoin's only 12 years old this is a process of educating people but again the people that get protected are the privileged the top call it three percent the people that get hurt the most are the people at the bottom of the privilege spectrum. The people that keep that live week to week, uh, you know, they might have ten thousand dollars in savings. I'll tell you what blew my mind when I was down in uh, in Miami. First thing that blew my mind: it cost four dollars and twenty five cents U.S. for a Coke Zero, which when you convert that to Canadian, it's over five bucks. All right. When Coke Zero first came out, I was buying those things for less than $1 Canadian, all right? That's in my lifetime. Second, and more importantly, uh, my bag got actually misplaced, let's put it that way, on my way back to the airport. And wouldn't you know that my flight 
back home got canceled. So I had to buy a to toiletry kit. This one shop wanted $18 for a thing of deodorant. 18 bucks for a thing of deodorant. That's not that the value of deodorant has gone up that much. Although sitting next to me might mean that, yeah, you need $18 worth of deodorant, Foss. But at the end of the fucking day, $18 for deodorant is only because the value of the U.S. dollar has gone down that much. The U.S. dollar does not stop stinky armpits, okay? Fuck, guys. Do some math, okay? And the people it hurts the most are the people at the bottom of the spectrum. That's why fiat is slave money. You are a slave to this ever-increasing price of deodorant and a price of Coca-Cola. This is really, really serious. I have three children. I want a future for them like I was lucky enough to grow up in. Larry, I think you would say the same thing. Absolutely. We can have this parallel system. I don't think five years is enough for us to develop this parallel system. Could, could the U.S. dollar fail in five years? Oh, my friggin' Lord, it could. And then what? It means that the Canadian dollar's failing tomorrow, which even makes me really scared, okay? Because there's no way that the U.S. dollar fails five years after the Canadian dollar fails. The Canadian dollar failure will be the first precursor to this. So you can hope that Canada fails, to which I'll say, fuck you guys, okay? Canada used to be a great nation if our politicians embraced bitcoin and took our energy and started to be the el salvador of the north i'd be so proud and we're working hard on that i gave a presentation to 45 members of parliament okay not all of them are brain dead like the ruling parties in both of our countries please people this is hope bitcoin is hope bitcoin is freedom money fiat is slave money and the usa was built on the principles of freedom Thank you.